Well, we have a great session coming up next, and I'm going to just immediately turn it over to them so they have their full time. We have Sugar Sugar Everywhere from our friends at the Melanie Zuckerman College of Public Health right here at the University of Arizona. So I will turn it over to them if they want to just go ahead and share their screen and they can get started. Good morning, Michaela. Good morning. Hi, everyone. My name is Michaela. Um, I'm a College of Public Health student, um, and this is Princess, who's here with me. Hi, everyone. I'm Princess. I'm also a, a College of Public Health student. Good morning, Princess. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started with our video now. sugar is in your favorite snacks and drinks. And to start us off, we will be looking at one of my favorite snacks, this cream filled cookie. So together we'll be guessing how much sugar do you think is in one of these packages? All right, so if you are following along, grab your cup and grab your sugar and go ahead and guess how much sugar do you think is in that package of that cream filled cookie? So those are super good. So I'm gonna guess they're super sweet. So maybe this much sugar in that container? What do you guys think? So it actually turns out in that one container, there is this much sugar. And I know that might seem like a lot because it actually is. Many times I know I'm guilty of it. Before you even know it, half the package is gone. You've eaten most of it and here you are taking in this much sugar in one day. And the crazy part is, in a single day, we're only allowed to have this much sugar. No more than six teaspoons for kids and women and no more than nine teaspoons for men. So keeping this in mind, this is the recommended amount of sugar. And this is how much some people can take in a single day just sitting down. This is actually 15 tablespoons of sugar in that one package. It's crazy, right? So next up, we'll be guessing how much sugar is in a ketchup package. I love ketchup, I put it on everything, but I have a feeling it's gonna be really bad. So once again, if you are following along, grab your cup and grab your sugar and go ahead and guess how much sugar do you think is in that one container of ketchup? I'm gonna guess it's a bit more in the cookie, just cause I feel like that's how it's gonna be. Um, let's go with this much. You think more? Maybe less? Well, I guess we'll find out. So in this little package of ketchup, there's actually this, wait, not just this much, this much sugar in that one container of ketchup, 23 tablespoons of sugar in that package. Crazy, right? I know I could probably put half of this on some fries or burgers or burgers and fries. So you have to be really careful when you start going in on these cookies and putting ketchup everywhere. It's actually a lot of sugar and compared to how much we're supposed to have, when you eat just a few of them or just a few tablespoons, 
you end up going way over the recommended amount. So remember to look at the nutrition label and to make sure you know how much sugar you're putting into your body. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Princess. Hi, everyone. My name is Kendra. And so for today's demonstration, I'm going to be reviewing some of your favorite drinks. Here is a sports drink, and then here is an orange juice. But before we measure how, out how much sugar is in these serving sizes, I wanted to review nutritional labels. So this may be a little overwhelming at first. So whenever you first start out, maybe focus on some of your key, um, key items. So for today's demonstration, I looked at serving size. So one serving size of this sports drink is 12 fluid ounces, which is about a cup and a half. And here's a breakdown of the various nutritions. And so today we're focusing on sugar. So 21 grams of sugar. How much does that work out to? So a cup and a half of your sports drink, 21 grams of sugar, works out to be one tablespoon and a half a tablespoon of sugar. So is that similar? So is this similar to what you measured out at home? So about one and a half tablespoons is in this one and a half cup of sports drink. So moving on to orange juice. So this is another reason why it's important to measure, uh, look at a nutritional label. So these are both drinks, but the serving size for the sports drink is a cup and a half, while the serving size for this orange juice is only a cup. So how much sugar do you think is in this one cup of orange juice? So in this one cup of orange juice, it's 24 grams of sugar. So that works out to be about one tablespoon, two tablespoons. So two tablespoons of sugar are in this one cup of orange juice, which is a little weird to think because this cup and a half of sports drink had less sugar in it than this one cup of orange juice. So hopefully Princess and I were able to help you visualize why it's important to read nutritional labels and uh, find creative ways to reduce your sugar consumption in your daily diet. So let's review that next. Um, so thank you for watching the video portion. Um, next we'll be doing a little bit of a trivia game. So let me um, start this and if everyone could get on, um, it's called Kahoot.it, um, and then we can get started on the trivia portion. So it's this website, Kahoot.it, and then you can put in this PIN number here. And we'll wait on players to join in on. So as people are waiting to join on, does anyone have any additional questions? Okay, see here. So sports drink somehow has more sugar than orange juice. Yeah, they pack in a lot of sugar in there just to make it taste good. We'll let people join in for about a minute or so and then we'll start the game. Okay, it looks like we have around 50 people. Um, oh, so let's give it like 30 more seconds maybe. Um, so you'll just uh, answer the question on the screen and um, you should be able to have options um, if you're on your phone or on your computer. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. 
Um, so every five days, the average person actually consumes about 51 tablespoons of sugar, which is a crazy amount. It's actually equivalent to 17 cans of soda. So every five days, you're basically drinking 17 cans of soda. Um, so, like we mentioned in the video, according to the CDC, people um, added sugars, which are sugars that are added during food processing or food preparation, um, should make up less than 10% of our daily caloric intake. So out of all the calories we consumed, we consume less than 10% of that should be added sugars. Some people are really doing well. Right. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> This one is actually true. Um, some studies have shown that there's a genetic disposition. Well, it's genetic, basically. So if your parents have the love for sugar, it's most likely that you'll have the same type of sugar addiction or love for sugar. Oh, this rankings are changing. Right. <laughs> And people can still um, join if you're a little late. The link is at the bottom here with the game pin. Yep, this one is lemons. I know it's really hard to believe because they're so sour, but they actually do have the most sugar in them out of all of those fruits. And yes, tomato is a fruit. Yeah, this one is true. The sugar is actually the only thing that babies are born craving out of everything in sugar.
this one was really interesting because what happens is when manufacturers are making different food items and drinks that have sugar in them, they do use a bunch of different names to kind of confuse you so you don't know that sugar is the number one ingredient. So when you see things like fructose and sucrose and stuff like that, those are all different names for sugar. And there's actually been over 115 different types of names out there just to say sugar. And yes, yeah. glucose too. Correct. So like Kendra said in her presentation, um, not each uh, food or food packaging is labeled the same way. So it can be very misleading because one can could be one serving size for um, one product, but then in another can from another brand, a serving size could be half of that. Um, so you always want to make sure that you're checking what a serving size is and then checking how much sugar is, is um, per serving size. And then that'll let you know how much is in the total package. And I believe that was it. So let's see. Good job. <laughs> Good job, everyone. And we have a couple runner ups here as well. So thank you all for joining this portion. Um, I'll stop sharing my screen now and then we will go into the Q&A part. Yeah, so at this point, you can go ahead and ask any questions that you might have for us. Um, so we're currently doing our master's in public health. So if anyone has any questions about public health as well, and kind of what we study and um, what kind of fields we're working in, then uh, we're open to that as well. Okay, a question here. Uh, what is public health? Okay, so public health is a really broad field. Um, it's kind of a part of the healthcare field. These are people who work on the opposite sides of doctors, basically. So we're more focused on like proactive health. Like we want to help give people tools in order to take care of themselves. Like whether it be, how would you explain this, Michaela? Because basically public health is everything. Yeah, so it's basically um, public health deals with keeping whole populations healthy. So you have doctors and healthcare providers that work mostly one on one, but with public health, you're really thinking of the community as a whole. So it's not just medicine, but you know it bleeds into um, how are our neighborhoods set up? Like, are they set up in a way that makes it um, easy for people to lead healthy lives? Um, are people safe at work? Are they exposed to chemicals? Um, with COVID, like, are we um, taking the right precautions as like a city or, you know, it could be from like a local um, population to national or even international, like the World Health Organization as a public health administration, like the CDC, things like that. So I saw a question about daily sugar, and yes, it should be about 25 um, grams per day. Um, that's according to the American Heart, Heart Association. Um, let's see. Okay, we have these questions. Um... I, oh, why did you select public health? Um... I selected public health because I had an interest in honestly helping like different populations of people. I wanted to focus on people who might not have the same opportunities as others. I know for me growing up, it was, I was treated a bit differently 
because I'm because I'm a minority. So it's like I wanted to focus on people who might not have the same opportunities or have the same push to make sure they can lead healthy lives and be successful and stuff like that. So a lot of different things are wrapped into public health. It's not just like healthy eating and stuff like that. There's a whole bunch of different things like exercise and um, the schools you go to, the areas you live in. There's so many things that affect whether or not your life can be healthy. So I wanted to teach other people that even though you might be disadvantaged, you can still lead healthy lives and give them the tools to do so. I got into it because I was really interested in medicine. And um, what's interesting with public health is that you can really make a big impact on the community as a whole. Um, so yeah, and it's just such a broad field, especially now with COVID, there's a lot of need for it. Um, so yeah, that's part of my reasons. Um, let's see. I get a lot of, uh, there's a couple questions about like, you know, why it's bad to have sugar and stuff. Um, so yeah, you can get hurt if you eat too much sugar, it can lead to um, type two diabetes, um, which helps you, um, which you know can lead to other sort of health issues such as, um, get, yeah, it does give you energy. Um, but yeah, if you have like type two diabetes, um, some people get really bad wounds from it. You can, you know, lose like toes and fingers and things like that. Um, so you definitely want to be make sure that you're consuming the right amount of sugar, and also you want to stay healthy, not, um, you know, um, become like obese or any like um, anything that could put additional strain on your body. Um, to substitute things that are sugary, I would say, um, well, fruits are always a really great substitution when you're still craving a little bit of sugar, but you don't want too much. But there is a cap to how much fruit you can have in your diet too, because those do have sugar as well. But I would say like all types of fruits, definitely. It's okay to have some cookies or, you know, like just some sugary snacks here and there, but you have to maintain and make sure that's not a lot. Like if you stick to the serving size, it will be okay. But most people don't. So what I do is I just kind of don't buy it at all. I make sure I buy fruits and even some vegetables can be really good if you put some, you know, ranch on there, but not too much because also sugary. But there's ways that you can dress up foods that you don't think are good and make them tastier. So about diabetes, um, if you have type 1 diabetes, when you're um, not making enough insulin, then unfortunately people are just um, born with that. And um, they have to give themselves like insulin injections and things like that. For type 2 diabetes, sometimes it can be managed better if you um, change your diet. So just consume less sugar, um, exercise more, things like that. But um, yeah, if you have type 1 or some like a serious form of type 2, then you would have to be on medications for it. And diabetes is not reversible. If you're pre-diabetic, like if you're at the cusp or on the line, then yes, you can reverse that. But once you have it, you can't reverse it. I think there was a question about the sugars and fruits. You had mentioned, you know, on the quiz that lemons had more sugar than other things, but is there a difference between the fruits, uh, the sugar that's in fruits and the sugar that is added, like, let's say to snacks and how your body processes it? Yeah, the sugar that comes in snacks and stuff like that is like from sugar cane. Mm -hmm. um, it's an added sugar. It's something that you grow. So it's like, it's, it's broken down, it's processed, and then it's added to foods. But the sugar that you find in fruit is natural. It's something that's just grown inside of them. So those are different types of sugars and your body has different reactions to them. Um, yeah, they have just like kind of like that. As for how it breaks it down differently, I'm not exactly sure, um, but it's a bit harder to break down I mean, it all depends on how much you take in because you can definitely take in too much fruit and have too much sugar from that and you will still have the same issues as if you had the added sugars from the sugar cane. Great. I think there was a question a little bit above where um, they were asking if public health officials were administering the COVID vaccine. Um, so in public health, um, we're not the ones um, usually 
doing any sort of clinical work where you would um, be the one administering vaccines, um, not like doctors and nurses or anything like that. But public health officials are the ones who are kind of making the decisions on like, um, how many vaccines do we have? Where should they go? Um, what's the priority list? So that whole field is um, part of public health, like emergency preparedness, um, pandemic preparedness. So that's really, really big right now. Um, yeah, uh, the University of Arizona does have a mobile health unit. Um, they travel all around um, Phoenix, um, around the Phoenix area, mostly to community health centers. Um, I can put a link over here of um, their website, but they do diabetes, hypertension, screenings, and I believe during COVID they were doing testing as well. So um, I'll go ahead and share that in the group chat. And then I saw a question about how lemons, how do lemons have more sugar than strawberries or the other um, fruits that we had mentioned. And it's basically because lemons have more citric acid. So it has more of um, the acidic type of, um, it's more acidic than strawberries and tomatoes and apples. They have more sugar, but the citric acid kind of deletes all that, kind of like X's it all out. You can't taste any of the sugar if you're also drinking something that's acidic. So that's why you can never taste um, the sugar in lemons. There was a question about sugar substitutes. If we're trying to uh, limit the amount of sugar that we use, would you recommend sugar substitutes or would you recommend something else? It depends on what you want to add the sugar to. For me, if I'm drinking like tea or something, I'll add honey instead of adding regular sugar. Or you can add those like the sweeteners that aren't real sugars. Those are a little bit better. You still shouldn't add too much though because it's also it's a sweetener at the end of the day. So there's sweeteners like equal and sweet and low, I think it's called. But I don't add very much sugar to my diet. I just stick with eating more fruits and vegetables and not taking in as much processed food. That's me personally. So if you could recommend one thing to our <laughs> listeners, what would you recommend to them to make a change in what they eat to eliminate some of the extra sugars in their diets? I think for one would just be, um, just check serving sizes and how much sugar is in snacks because I feel like that's my personal um, problem is just you know with um, working from home and things like that I feel like I tend to just snack a lot more um, so I'll either just be mindful of how much sugar is in what I'm eating or I'll just be like okay like let me just eat a couple fruits instead or anything like that. Okay Princess do you have any other recommendations you'd like to share before we close? What was the question? My dog was going crazy in the background. I didn't <laughs> Fun part about being at home. Um, if one thing that you would recommend for people to do to cut down on the amount of sugar in their diet. Um, it is really easy to eat a lot of sugar if it's at home. So I would suggest limiting how much you bring home in, in general. That's what I have to do. So I'm going to buy something that's sugar, like those cookies that I buy. I'll just buy that and then that's it. I won't buy anything else. I won't even bring it home because if it's there, you're going to eat it. Out Next thing you know, the whole mouth. box is gone. Like, right. so I just don't even bring it home because the temptation is too high. I'm bored. I'm at home. I'm hungry. So I'm going to eat the whole thing. So I would just recommend just limiting how much you bring or how much you mm -hmm. allow close to you so you don't end up eating the whole thing. That's great recommendation. And Michaela, thank you for the recommendation about Reading nutrition labels are really an excellent way to learn about what's in your food and to make better choices. So I encourage all of you listening in to really learn about nutrition labels. It's a great way to learn math too, because you have to figure out what percentage of the calories are coming from sugar. And so you want to make sure that you um, learn how to use those. And so if you have any questions or ever want to get any more information, I'm sure Michaela and Princess would be happy to, to speak with you. And so we'll be providing their information to you in the follow-up. So ladies, thank you so much. Thank you for all the work you do with our College of Public Health. We wish you the best in your future endeavors, and we look forward to seeing you again. So thanks for joining us today. Thank, thank you for you. having us. Thank you.